what success looks like. That is one of the first fundamental, most important things before you even consider hiring somebody. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the future of Amazon and building your A-level team. What does the future of Amazon have in store for sellers? What are the best practices for building a team and scaling? And how to work on your business instead of in your business? Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right. So today we're going to be digging into the future of Amazon uh, and building your uh, A-level team. Our guest is the founder and CEO of an eight-figure Amazon business. His career began uh, in leadership development uh, back at American Airlines in 2014. While Josh was employed at American Air Airlines, he and his wife started a custom uh, wedding invitation business that worked on uh, that they worked on together in the evenings. After pivoting into their stationary empire, he now uh, has over 1,300. Yep, 1,300 products. Uh, we're going to be welcoming first-time guest Josh Josh Hart Hadley in just a second. But first, let's have a word from our sponsor. I want to thank Jeff Schick Legal for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. You've probably heard on the podcast about Amazon suspensions. They're very real. It can happen at any time. And when it does happen, how do you get out of it? How does the little guy like you and me get out of these suspensions without paying an arm and a leg in legal fees? This is where Jeff Schick Legal is here to help. For a very low monthly retainer, for only $89, Get access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. That's right. You can sit back, relax, enjoy that cup of coffee while listening to the Lunch with Norm podcast, knowing that you have an advocate and a partner in your business success. But wait, just mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Get the protection you need and visit jeffschick.com today. That's J E F F. S-C-H-I-C-K dot com. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome, Josh. Hey, Norm. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. It, it It's fun to be here. You were on my podcast. We recorded one last week, and now it's fun to flip the script and for me to be the guest on your podcast. So this is fun for me. See, now you're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the OG, man. You're the, you're the beard guy. You know, I, everybody I, knows you. So th this is my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, the OG. Um, okay, so I got my, my dog has decided to go right under my feet. I'm probably kicking him in the head or something. So just a second as I shuffle around. Uh, I do have a dumb dog, by the way. Uh, Kelsey knows all about it. So Josh, you know, you're talking about something really cool today, the future of Amazon and building your A-level team. I think it's a really important topic. And, you know, why don't we just touch off on, you know, let's talk about how do you begin the process? I think that's the first, the best way to start off. Yeah, I, I think that the important thing, I think for many sellers and for your audience to hear is that, many brands on Amazon can stumble into seven figures very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. I think it can be just you and maybe a business partner and, and maybe a VA or two. And all of a sudden you have this seven figure brand, right? You've stumbled upon a million dollars in sales on Amazon and you're like, holy smokes, I didn't even know that this was possible, but you stumbled into it. What I have seen that makes the biggest difference though, is that you you don't necessarily stumble into an eight figure business and beyond, right? That's something that takes a lot of effort, time, strategic planning and team building. Most importantly, um, documenting processes in order to scale the business. And so that's, that's really what, you know, whenever I'm talking to, to sellers and when I hear from most people hiring, is their biggest challenge. And a lot of people just talk about, oh, just go find VAs. But it's more, it's much more than just hiring VAs, especially oh, yeah. with 
the more competitive Amazon's getting, it's like all of us as Amazon sellers need to up level our game and start seeing our businesses as real brands. We don't just sell on Amazon and we're not just an Amazon brand. We are real businesses and we need to start treating them as such. So I'm going to give you an example too about uh, trying to find a VA. So going back to, let's say 2013, finding a VA, uber easy, uh, actually even into the early 2000s, you could find VAs. I had one person working with me back, way back in the day. Um, he was from, it wasn't Nigeria. Oh, it was Kenya. And he was a, he was an engineer, MBA. Anyways, uh, he was charging me. He came back with a quote of 68 cents per hour. Wow. Uh, I thought that was ridiculous. I, I just, I couldn't do it. Uh, so I said, oh, how about if I give you $2 an hour? And he was over the moon and he delivered content as much as I wanted. He worked 24 hours if need be, which I never made him do. But uh, anyways, I went back. I was talking to his name's Gilbert. Gilbert, if you're listening, hi. Uh, anyways, I went back to him on the same platform. And just uh, this goes back a few years ago. And he now up to $8 an hour. And then I went back to him on the same platform and he's over $20 an hour. So what I'm trying to bring out here, Josh, is that just because people say, oh, go to this platform, I'm not going to name any names, but there are some platforms out there that I used to hire VAs very cheaply, very cheaply. And I had to do all the vetting, but now everybody's caught on and they're crazy expensive. And I, did, I just talked to, Kelsey knows this, I just talked to this VA, an entry-level VA, and she was talking about charging over $20 an hour. Wow. Now, she's not on my time. She's not from North, North America. She's never done this job before. Um, her resume fell apart. And yet, 20 bucks an hour. But she's going to give me a deal. You know, so I, 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 I have over three uh, months, I'd have to pay her 20, $20 an hour. So I think one of the first things that we have to do as Amazon sellers is make sure that you have options. And if you don't know how to find VAs, that's probably like before the training and before the SOPs, that's probably one of the biggest things you want to do. I mean, this is just a personal experience that happened way back when. And also uh, it happened to be just this week. Yeah. Well, I do have a kind of a seven step process that I go through yeah. um, to hire, you know, team members, because I'm a big believer that you can hire even management level staff from overseas, right? They don't need to just be VAs. In fact, I'm kind of over getting VAs for the business that happened maybe the first year or two. But since then, I've hired very specialized and even management level staff mm -hmm. um, overseas that has been working wonders because yeah, to your point, like prices are going up everywhere across the world and you don't find those one or $2 VAs anymore. And so I'd rather pay a management level staff where I might be paying a six figure salary to somebody in the U S but I could be paying, you know, a fraction of that cost overseas. Right. Yeah, and we do that with our accounting. We do that with our operations. So our operation, two operations managers are overseas. So yeah, people <clears throat> that uh, are actually trained for the job and uh, we don't have to do a lot of training. We pay a little bit more, but uh, even like, if, you, if you have, or if you find that quality VA, probably during a, a process that you have, um, then you can teach as long as you know what you're talking about and they can train. But why don't we go through that? Why don't we go through your hiring process first? All right. So I do have a seven step process. So I'll give you kind of the high level overview of those seven steps and then we can dive into the details and Norm, you know, ask me more questions and we'll go as deep as you want here. <laughs> um, so number one, I have that we you need to define the role and what success looks like. That is one of the first fundamental, most important things before you even consider hiring somebody. You need to very specifically define the role. It's, and that doesn't just mean, hey, I need somebody that does social media. Okay, 
Like, tell me more. What does success look like with social media? All right. Step number two is going to be creating KPIs for that, those roles. Number three is listing the job on multiple sites. Hold on. Can we go back to number two? I, yep. If you're a beginner, if you've just you know joined Amazon, please explain a KPI. So I, I and the reason I say that is a yep. lot of the times you know I'm talking to new staff, I'm using acronyms, and they're going yep. like this, but I know they're really you know doing that. So. <laughs> yep. Yep. So KPI is key performance indicator. Okay. So what are the the targets? that they should be shooting for in their job. And, and we'll get more into the specifics of all of these as well. Um, so number two is creating KPIs, key performance indicators for the role. Number three is listing the job on multiple websites, and we can discuss those. Number four is having applicants take assessments before you communicate with them or review their resumes or review their applications. You're having them take assessments. Step number five is you then have the people that succeed with those ass assessments, then take or perform a test project that you put together for them. Number six is that you then perform interviews with them. I like to break it up into first doing a group interview, and then you do one-on-one -on -one interviews. And then last but not least, you do extend the offer to that person and while you do that, you have them sign this role profile document that you've created at step number one, and you help them understand that this is a 90-day probationary period. You have to be meeting your KPIs listed here, your key performance indicators listed on your role profile in order to maintain or really you know, own this job, so to speak. And so it's very clear right from the beginning. So that's kind of the overall, you know, seven step process. Where do you kind of want to take it from here, Norm? Well, why don't we quickly kind of go through each one? So I know that there was some that had uh, multiple levels. So if we go through each of the seven steps, starting at the first one, defining the role, what do we have to do? And let's go through the seven steps. Let's not take too much time on it. Yep. But uh, if we could go a little bit deeper into each one. Yeah. So. Let's talk about defining the role. Again, you need to become very specific with what it is that you are looking for in this role. What are the outcomes that you want to happen? Um, specifically, you want to be looking for like painting that picture of what does success look like so that the job applicants can already read through the job description. Ah, this is what success looks like. I have these skills. I have these talents. That's going to help you first really understand the type of candidates that you need to be looking for and sourcing for this position. So, okay. so yeah. can I just stop you there for a sec? Yep. I know, um, I don't know if you know Lauren, but Lauren Petrullo was on and she makes it very difficult for an applicant to apply. Not to the point where um, it's, it's hard for them. It, they just have to follow instructions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I really loved about what she was talking about is she'll go on to LinkedIn or she'll go on to a platform and she'll do a video talking about all the expectations, like the, the key role, um, even talk about salary. So if somebody's expecting, you know, hundred bucks an hour and you're paying two, then they're eliminated. But yeah. they also, uh, and I don't know if you do this, but I don't do it, but I thought it was pretty key. One of the things that she requires them to do when they're responding to the role is to provide a video and uh now you said and we'll get into this a bit later but i thought that was a pretty cool idea yeah no i agree i a video is a component of this when we get into kind of completing that test project mm -hmm. um and, and that's kind of the main thing of what i'll talk about this is kind of my own like sales funnel in a way of getting the best talent out there and so you're going to be casting a wide net to begin with, right? Filling the top of the funnel. And then that funnel gets smaller and smaller as you go um, further down. And really it's meant to help the entrepreneur or the business owner save time because good grief, like you could spend all day reviewing <laughs> resumes and jobs and people's applications and all of that stuff. So th the process is meant to 
save you time, but also giving you and really pointing out the best candidates really quickly in the process. You okay. want to move into step two? Let's do it. All right. So step number two is establishing those key performance indicators. Now, what's different about the key performance indicators than just describing what success looks like in the job is that these are measurable activities. Okay. You can actually assign a number to something like this. All right. So let's use, um, you know, customer service could be an example. And then we can talk about our supply chain manager as well. So with customer service, one of our key performance indicators is that we have a less than five minute response time for any inquiry that comes in, right? That is measurable. That's great, by the way. Um, we also have, you know, we also sell on Etsy. And so one of our key performance indicators is that um, we receive the star seller badge on Etsy, which means people give us, you know, uh, I think it's 90% of the time, five star reviews, and then your response rate is under five minutes, right? So that kind of correlates with that. Um, so anyways, those are some of the KPIs that we've set for customer service. For our supply chain manager, um, it is that we have an in-stock rate at Amazon that's 99% or above. And that on a weekly basis, again, we have 1,300 different SKUs, but on a weekly basis, the KPI is that there are less than five items or SKUs that are currently out of stock on any given week. Okay. Things happen all the time, you know, sales shoot through the roof with the nascent or whatever it is. But anyways, you can see that these are just kind of some high level KPIs that I want to share just to provide some examples for people so that you understand like these are measurable activities. So at the end of each week, we can say, yes, this person did this or they didn't do this. This isn't a, well, how does Josh feel today? Does he like this person? Does he feel like they're they're winning, you know, in the business or not. It's like you either responded to customer messages in under five minutes or you didn't. There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it. That is the key component of KPIs. They're measurable and everybody is on the same page. You and your team member both know when you're winning or when you're losing and it's objective. All right. All right. Should we go step three? Let's do it. All right. So listing the job on multiple sites. Now, I know Norm, I, I'm interested to hear if you use any other different sites. I'm always on the hunt for different <laughs> sites to find good overseas talent. Um, but the core ones that we've used for us, they're very basic. Many of you have already probably heard of them, but we go to Upwork and then we go to onlinejobs.ph and then we also list the job on Indeed and we target specific countries such as Mexico, the Philippines, um, those are our two uh, main countries that we target with those Indeed postings. Um, and the key component here that I want to add is that with Upwork, you can turn on certain filters in Upwork. We have found the most success on Upwork. So I'm kind of given, I'm revealing my secret. I don't know if I should tell this. Do it. <laughs> um, the, the key filter that we put on there is up or it's I think it's called rising talent okay okay these are people that have typically they don't have any history on Upwork so you know many people look at that and they're like oh I don't know if I want to work with somebody that doesn't have a bunch of reviews and stuff like that on the contrary that is where I continue to find the best people because they're typically leaving corporate jobs there in the Philippines or Mexico and they're kind of they they want to start this work from home adventure and so they're they're kind of they're green at working from home but they come with a ton of valuable like professional business experience so that's kind of my hack um there with upwork norm do you have any other you know platforms that you guys use as yeah. you kind of look at, for vas or overseas team members yeah, definitely so first of all, uh, Lauren talked about, uh, I, I believe, and I strongly believe in this right now, there is a huge group in Pakistan who are trying to become VAs and they're very well trained. Um, I think e-commerce elite is one of the huge training areas, the enablers. Uh, so that, uh, and I've had so much success 
uh, with uh, with Pakistani uh, VAs and workers. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, but uh, one of the ones, one of the areas that we look at is VA, uh, v, VAA, that's Galad's, uh, also Multiply Me. Uh, now mm-hmm. you're going to pay for that service, um, but you get very high qualified people over with Yanni uh, Kaczynski's uh, Multiply Me. There's also Craigslist, believe it or not. In Craigslist, we've hired people um, out of the Philippines or wherever you go to Craigslist, you can place place an ad. Uh, LinkedIn is another area that uh, you can be very specific with your with your ad to find people. But you've got to be very careful because if you place an ad, uh, online jobs, let's say, for example, it's unfiltered, really. Anybody can apply. And we've had as many as 400 people apply for a single job. So this is where, you know, we talked about it just a bit earlier, having that fill, if they don't have something in this subject or if they don't use the right font, or we can filter that right down, even though the person, we might be missing out on a really great person, they can't follow instructions. So we get them yep. off the list. Yep. No, I, I love that. You listed off a, a lot of great sites that I don't even think we're taking advantage of. We'll have to, um, you know, have my team look at those and start posting on those. Oh, there is yeah. another one, by the way, in Canada, globally, called iWorker, iWorker.ca. And I don't know these, like, I know the name of the guy is Enrique, but um, I've hired a bunch of people from uh, from iWorker. Uh, because uh, they go into South America, Costa Rica, Venezuela, um, uh, and they have, uh, it's very inexpensive, uh, around the same level as the Philippines, Um, high quality Mm. workers. The only thing you have to watch out for, and here's a tip for everybody, if you're going to go, especially into Venezuela, um, there are some great workers that I hired, but I forgot to do an internet test. And their internet. So one of the criteria when we're looking at KPIs from our end is you give us a screenshot of your internet, because if you're only doing, uh, if your internet is uh, dial up, you know, yeah. you're going to be paying 10 times the amount for that person to either watch a video or get things done. So we have to make sure that if the person's really good, uh, we'll, we'll upgrade their internet for free. So if we can get that to 10 megabytes or whatever it is. The problem is in some countries like Venezuela is that sometimes they can't get to one megabyte, Mm. one megabyte. And I've had it where the upload is below uh, 0.01. So it's almost impossible to communicate. So it is, there are some incredible workers wanting to work, uh, except you got to check the internet, but iWorker, I think it's the iWorker.ca, is one of those sleepers that nobody knows about. Howard Tai, by the way, also has uh, at Sing- Signalytics has a uh, um, uh, a operation in Pakistan as well, uh, recruiting, helping people recruit. Yeah, yep, I love it. Uh, great, great tips, Norm. That that was great. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about, let's move into the next step, which is kind of number four, is having the applicants take assessments. So Norm, you talked about you know receiving 400 applicants. For me and my team, I've even pushed our team to receive 1,000 applicants for a job position. <laughs> now, you think about that and you're like, OMG, like I am not going to review 1,000 applicants. I am not going to look at resumes. You don't need to, all right? So this is the key. And again, this is how we find really, really good talent on our team, okay? So we're gonna shoot for 500 to 1,000 different applicants on our job listing. So now how do we filter from those? My executive assistant, and she's kind of our hiring manager as well, she goes through and she'll respond to each of the applicants and immediately, it doesn't matter what they say, we kind of have the same thing that I think everybody's heard make sure you put in a line that they need to say in their job description in in there to make sure that they actually follow instructions right so we say you know make sure you start your 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 application with i love pizza right just something silly like that yeah so anyways 
my executive assistant will immediately respond to any applicant. And the first thing that they say is, hey, will you please take this assessment? Okay. And we send them a link to the assessment. It's like, hey, you look like you have a lot of great experience. And then will you take this assessment? That's it. We send that copy and paste to everybody. Okay. They then will take this assessment and the assessment tool that we've been using is called Criteria Corp. All right. We looked at a lot of different assessment, you know, tools out there. A lot of them charge like per assessment. And so (laughs) paying a thousand dollars per, you know, a thousand applicants every time like that, that gets real expensive real quick. Criteria Corp there, it's kind of unlimited. That's the best part about it. So that's why we use it. So we'll send it to everybody. What this measures is it kind of gives, they call it their cognitive aptitude ability. In a way, it's kind of like an IQ score. But what they believe, and you could go read their scientific study on it, is that they have proven that the higher that score is, the higher the likelihood of job success in any job. And that's kind of the thing that they pitch. So we look at that and then we kind of have our cutoff range of where we say, okay, nope, if you fall below, I think it's 60, a score of 60, it's out of 100, then we're not even going to move you on to the next round. There's also a basic English skills test that they do and like a typing test, right? So um, it has them go through that and then they submit their, their response. We get to see all of their scores. And then we filter, right? So from about 500 to 1,000 applicants, we typically expect, so this is kind of going to move into step number five, which is the test projects. Um, We take these applicants that have succeeded with this assessment, right? They've met our minimum criteria scores. And so we'll go from 500 to 1,000 applicants down to, it's about 10%, 50 to 100, like, real good applicants. Okay. They're like, all right, they've met the assessment scores. So now the next step, even reviewing a hundred applications and resumes, that's still too much. You don't want to spend your time doing that. Okay. So then I create a test project. So I'll create a loom video and I will walk people through. I'll say, Hey, congratulations. You made it this, this far in the process. By the way, we've had over 500 or whatever applicants for this job position. You're in the top you know, 10% right now. So give yourself a pat on the back. But what we're going to ask you to do now is not going to be easy. And then we will give people a kind of, it's a figurative example that I've come up with. And so with customer service, it could be a series of questions that's like, how would you resolve this issue if the customer says X, Y, Z, right? And they have no idea what our SOPs are. They don't have our templates but I want to see the way that they think. Same thing when we hired our supply chain manager. I gave them, you know, kind of a forecast of here's our current sales velocity. Here's where our current inventory stock is. Here's the lead time from our manufacturers. Tell me what orders are you placing today? Which ones are you sending directly to Amazon? Which ones are going to the 3PL, right? I came up with this example and I obviously knew the answer to this because I created this example. And then you send that test project to people. And then what I ask them to do, and this is kind of goes back to what you mentioned earlier, Norm, I ask them to create a Loom video Mm -hmm. with their response. So typically it's like an Excel sheet that they're sending back or a Word doc with a Loom video. And I tell them the maximum that that Loom video can be is five minutes because it also see it, it allows me to see if they follow instructions, you'd be surprised with the number of 30 minute loom videos that I get. Um, But you get, I say, you got to condense this into five minutes for me, right? I know there's probably a lot to talk about, but can you do it in five minutes? Because that's also going to show you somebody that can strategize and then communicate really effectively. Okay. So then of those 50 to 100 people that I've sent the test project to, what we're seeing right now is anywhere between 30 to 40% of those people will actually move forward and actually complete the test project. All right. So now I'm down to somewhere between 20, 30, maybe 40 applicants at the okay. end. Of the hey, day. Josh, can yep. I stop you there for a second? Yep. What was the name of the assessment tool that you're using? Criteria Corp. Okay. Kelsey, if you could just post that. And what is the cost of it? 
right now I think I pay two thousand bucks a year. But it, you have to. There's no standard pricing on their website. You genuinely have to set up a call with them. I don't know why they do that. I yeah. think they'd get more business otherwise. But yeah, so ours is like at two thousand bucks a month just to give people or a sorry, month? two thousand bucks a year. Oh, okay, all right, very good. People an idea. <laughs> all right, now, um, first of all, to the listeners. If you've got any questions about the topic we're talking about today, recruiting, scaling, building that team, please put it into the comments section. I'm sure there's a lot of you that are either looking at expanding or are expanding, but you're doing it the wrong way. If you're doing it the right way, let us know. Also, uh, so we've got uh, probably another 20, 30 minutes on that, but we'll get into the questions in about 15. So get them in here. We also have an incredible giveaway today. It's one of those, you know, wide eye uh, giveaways. So hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, get entered. But Josh, why don't you tell everybody what you're going to give away? And I got to say, it's awesome. Yeah. So I'm giving away a comprehensive business strategy audit session at no cost. So this is valued at $10,000. When people want to reach out to me and say, hey, I want you to kind of take a look at my business Tell me where you see some opportunity for growth or, you know, it could be talking about how do I build out my team or my operating system, documenting SOPs. It kind of runs the gamut. So, uh, but it's, it's $10,000 for me to really dive in, understand your business. And it typically ends up being about a three hour session. So this, there's a lot of meat on the bones. This isn't like, oh, I just kind of picked something out of the air and it was a brief glance at your business. This is like you and I, we're going to sit down on a call and we're going to dive into the weeds of your business and let's unblock a lot of those obstacles. And, you know, it's one of my favorite things to do, Norm, because for me, you know, it took my wife and I seven years to grow our business to an eight figure brand. And we hit a lot of stumbling blocks along the way. Um, we, we made a lot of, you know, mistakes and. I wish I would have had a mentor or guide along the way that would have helped me kind of like navigate and steer clear of those easy stumbling blocks that I just, I ran right into a brick wall and it was like, that didn't need to happen if I just would have been talking to the right people or getting somebody that's already kind of been there, done that and their two cents in the situation. So it, it's my favorite thing to kind of like give back and to watch other people not run into those same mistakes. So that's what it is. Okay, very good. So again, if you're interested, I just saw Chuck, he posted hashtag Willa Kelsey, and he's tagged two people. He did it the wrong way, though. You have to put the at sign in front of the person's name. So in case you don't know how to do it, we're still going to enter you for an extra time, Chuck, but it's hashtag Willa Kelsey, and then tag two people, and that you have to put the uh, at sign to add the person's name. Um, so let's hit the commercial, and we'll be right back. A big thank you to our sponsor, Post Purchase Pro, the only complete A to Z done for you real email and text marketing service built specifically for Amazon sellers. Post Purchase Pro creates all of your digital assets 100% for you from marketing inserts, complete sales funnels, email follow-up sequences, and weekly email promotions. They manage and optimize everything for you to drive more sales, get higher ranking, and receive more reviews on Amazon. So check out Post Purchase Pro now to see if you too will see enormous growth like their nearly 500 clients worldwide. That's Post Purchase Pro at postpurchasepro.com slash lunch. Okay, and if you're liking what you're hearing today, don't forget to smash those like buttons. And if you want, we are always open to people leaving us reviews. So anyway, let's get back to Josh. Now, just a sec. I got a frog in my throat. All right. Thank God for mute buttons. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. All right, Norm. So the last thing that we talked about was, you know, receiving those test projects back, right? So we'll get anywhere from about 30 to 40% that will actually complete them. Um, once we get those test projects back, I or the manager that is going to be working with this person will actually review those test projects one by one. Okay. 
So now I'm actually looking at for the first time people's resume and their job application that they sent over. Okay. So we went down from 500 to a thousand applicants that I would potentially need to review to 30 people, right? Now this is manageable. I can block off, you know, two hours to go through these and it's much more valuable because I'm seeing how they would strategically think through an actual problem that would need to be solved in this role and how they would perform. And uh, the great thing about it is like very quickly, you see a 30 minute loom video come in and you're like off the list, you know? And so you can just uh, see who follows the instructions. You go through that process of reviewing them. And then ultimately you are going to schedule group interviews for the ones that you see succeeding. Okay. So typically I'll end up with like on the best case scenario, maybe 10 of those 30 or 40 applicants will be like, all right, I love your test project. I think you would be a good fit. So then we'll bring them into a group interview situation. And this is, this is one of the newer things that we've implemented, but I've loved it. Um, it's super awkward for the candidates at times, but it's one of the best things that I've been able to see. So we'll bring them in five people max at a time. Okay. So five people at a time, we'll bring them in, we'll set up a Zoom interview. And here they are, five applicants show up on the same Zoom link. And then I'm like, hey, welcome. Here are your, uh, you know, people that you're competing against. I'm going to go through this group interview and you guys are all going to answer the same questions. Um, so typically this will last about, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. And I ask them a standard questions about the job. I want to hear specific examples of like, how have you had success in you know, supply chain or customer service or whatever it is that I'm hiring for. And I'm looking for concrete examples, right? And I'm looking for people that show up well, that they're professional. They're also respectful when other people are talking. And then here's my, my quick hack um, at the end of these group interviews. Favorite question to ask, the most awkward question to ask. I ask them each to say, all right, based on this group interview, who would you hire and why? And by the way, you can't tell, you can't say yourself, yourself. Okay. So they then have to go and, and <laughs> say, you know what, John, actually, you know, if, if I'm the business owner, I would hire John because X, Y, Z. What has been fascinating is that every time I've done this, everybody has pointed out the exact right person to hire. Um, fascinating kind of like social experiment there. And, uh, and typically the, the cream always rises to the top and other people even notice it. Okay. I've never heard of that technique. It is. I learned about it at a mastermind event, um, earlier this year. And I was like, that's interesting. I like the concept. I tested it out. I've done this now two different times recently and actually three different times. And it has worked every single time. I'm like, yep, this, wow. this is the person. Um, it also boosts more confidence in, in that decision as well. So we do that and then I'll bring them in for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, and this is the one-on-one -on -one interview, what I'm looking for. This isn't just like, ah, oh, tell me about yourself. Like this is, I'm going to go through your career history and I'm going to ask a series of questions of, I want to get to... I want to know who your manager was that you reported to the most. And then I'm going to, I, this is kind of uh, what, I can't remember what movie this is from, but they, they give them the truth serum, right? Um, and, and it causes them to force speak the truth. And so my, my truth serum that I feel like I give when I'm on these interviews is I say, we will be reaching out to your previous managers. We like to do reference checks. When I reach out to your manager, John, what what rating will John give you in regards to your performance on a scale of one to 10 and why? And then they're like, oh, well, what will John say? Um, you know, it's it's not like, hey, how do you think John liked your performance? It's what will John say? And now they are going to honestly start speaking the truth. And then I ask, what will John say is the greatest strength that you brought to their team? Okay. What will John say was your area of improvement when you were working with him? So it's a 10 times better question than 
what are your weaknesses? And then yeah. they're going to give you some fluff. This is, no, what did John say your weakness was? And by the way, if you don't give me the right answer and I reach out to John and John tells me, you know what? He'd never showed up on time. Um, and you didn't mention that that's already a red flag in my book. Right? So that's what I, I basically go through their career history. I get the names of their managers. I get them to, you know, uh, give me their contact information. And then ultimately what I'm looking for is a pattern of success in any job that they've had. Have they consistently been promoted or quickly moved on to leadership positions or they've always been going the extra mile, no matter what team they've been in, even all the way back to college or even high school, like you could go far back. Yeah. And those type of people, they're always the natural leaders. They're always the nat the people that are going above and beyond. They, they lead the group discussions um, when you're in school and things like that. So that's what I'm looking for. And then ultimately that's, that's who we choose to hire after we've, you know, reached out to those references and that's Can the I final stop you there step. For a sec? Yep. Uh, all right. Do you ever ask why they're leaving their job? Yeah. Every time. Yeah. 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 That that's super, super important is, and, and you know, we were looking at a project manager recently um, for the business. And like, we had an applicant that like every single year, it was a new job. And I was like, okay, like this is like over 20 years, there's a new job. Like there's either a really good reason as to why that's happening or there's a bad reason as to why that's happening, right? And so yes, asking that, and here's the other kind of hack with that is typically the first answer that people give you is the fluff answer, right? It's like, oh, we, I just wanted to explore new opportunities. I kind of got bored. It's like, I follow up with the question and say, well, tell me more. Are there other reasons why you decided to leave? And then people start to open up even more. So don't just take the, the first kind of surface level answer to that. Because yes, you want to reveal, this is again what I'm looking for with the pattern of success. You want to reveal that people aren't being pushed out of their jobs or getting fired or getting laid off, right? Because businesses aren't going to lay off their best people. Right. They're going to find ways to keep them on board. So you're trying to find like, wait, why did you move? Was it, hey, I got a better job opportunity. Somebody poached me, right? Then I'm like, all right, that's good. I like to see that. Um, or, you know, hey, I, I had to move cities. They wouldn't allow me to work remote and I had to move. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, so anyways, that's... Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. So you touched on two things I was going to touch on. So one of the things that I red flag every time is when I do look at the short list and there's resumes and those resumes reflect a year of work ongoing, like you said, and it happens all the time, one year, one year. And sometimes there are multiple jobs within the year. So what the heck is going on? That's the first red flag. The other red flag, because this happened to me, and now when we hire people, they have to sign off that they'll never do this. But um, I ask people, hey, can you show me like company information? Can you show me your, your last company's SOPs for X, Y, and Z? Or can you share anything? If they share any of their company's information with me, they're off the list right away. Mm. Like if they say, uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, they're reluctant to say anything that you could see that they're umming and eyeing. Yep. But, you know, oh, I, I can't do that. Oh, OK. Music to my ears. Yeah. You know, but if they do, they're gone. Yep. And another thing, too, just to, you know, to find the right candidates, too, is if you notice that when they do leave previous jobs, if they're like, yeah, so I, you know. I transitioned. I actually gave them about a month to transition. I made sure I trained somebody yeah. um, because otherwise, if you have people that are just like, yeah, I just up and left. Right. And it's like, I love asking like, well, what was that transition process? If they just say like, oh, well, one day I was working the next day I was gone. Like again, red flag because they're going to be the people that leave you high and dry. Yeah. Yeah. And if they start really trash talking, yeah. so I don't want those type of people. In fact, one of the ways, one of the only ways you can really 
if you mess up this, this one thing, gossip, I don't, I don't like gossip. I won't stand for gossip in the company. If I hear gossip, like when I had a physical location, um, if I went outside and there was a smoking area and people were sitting around and they were complaining, you know, I'd warn no gossip. Come on guys, let's keep this positive. But if they did, if I caught them again, they were gone. I don't care what the employee was or at that time it was all employees, but you know, I just can't stand that. It brings down negativity. Uh, it doesn't help anybody. So I don't like it. If we're on group meetings, if that were to happen, although it won't, because we try to build that into the culture of the company, you know, to be positive, um, trash talking is not accepted. Yep. hundred percent agree with that. hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Are we getting close to the end? Oh, that's, by the way, that's it. we are getting yeah. close right, like to the end of the podcast. I noticed that we got a few questions in, which is awesome. We'll get to them. Look, you just heard a ton of really high quality ways to find an employee. If you have any questions on this, or if you have any comments on it, please put it into the comment area. Uh, the next point to this, I, I don't even like, I know there's certain questions I wanted to ask you about this. I don't know if it's going down the wrong rabbit hole here, but the next point, Part to this for us is you can get the best person in the world, but if you don't train them properly or if mm -hmm. there's not the uh, policy and procedures set out for them to follow, all you're going to do is have a really great employee that's going to leave because they get frustrated. Yeah. Well, 100%. And then your expectation, you're going to be disappointed with their performance. And you're like, why are you not doing X, Y, Z? And it's like, well, you never told me to do X, Y, Z, right? And so that is, you know, probably this is the precursor to all of those seven steps, but it is documenting the process, right? That you want them to follow, right? And hopefully they're bringing even more value to that than the table that they can help even refine your processes, but you've got to give them somewhere to begin, right? Um, and, and pointing them in the right direction. Even if you're hiring, hey, I, I'm hiring a PPC manager for my business, but that PPC and I hire somebody that is has 10 years of PPC management experience. Okay. So what they come in, they might have a completely different way of doing PPC and it might not be what I wanted to be happening with my PPC uh, management. And so it's super important. And we've done this, you know, how have we built our team up to 20 people at this point? It's been a very methodical approach. It, that we don't we haven't just hired we didn't hire 20 people overnight it first was all right let's spend a month documenting the process that can be painful but it is vital document the process and then once you document the process it helps reveal what those kpis are going to be right and it helps you craft that that role profile so 100 percent norm like you've got to have those sops ready and then day one like you could have them like all right go watch these loom videos that i've recorded that walks you through the process of what yeah. we would like to do here. Yeah. So here's the onboarding uh, videos. And then what we try to do, we don't have it for everyone, but we also have like a trainer come on, talk to the person. And uh, we provide uh, training, video training or recorded training. So people can go into a folder. The folder has three folders. It ends up with the policy and procedure which has the buy-in. So this is the document. It has the buy-in, the prerequisites. So what do you have to know before you get into it? The definitions, all the acronyms and you know what you need to understand. The SOP, who you're reporting to and quantification. On the bottom, we have a link to different templates, but that's also in the other folder and then followed up by the uh, video training. Uh, one of the biggest and I think most important aspects of our company uh, Kelsey's probably rolling his eyes right now because he knows how I feel about this. If you, when you're training, we have so many steps in our SOP, we make it easy for people to say, if they make a mistake, oh, okay, it was step 17 or something like that. They can come back and we can say, okay, you know, what happened here? Oh, uh, it was step 17. Well, either there was a different interface on Amazon or something else happened, but Typically, it's our fault. We the SOP might be wrong. We have to replace it, or the uh, the platform changed. But 
if the uh, if the person went through the video, didn't catch or understand quite step 19, it's not coming back to us. How do you fix it? We want to see what they're going to do for follow-up. I don't want to be the psychologist. I don't want to be the person going, no, no, no. This is and going out and finding the answer. If, uh, back in the day, I had this all the time. I had an open door policy. The one thing everybody knew is don't come in to me, knock on the door and say, how do I find someone? And I would look up and call, like, at the day, this is how old I am. I call 411. You know, I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. You want to make my eyes roll? You want to impress me? Follow up. If the answer is wrong, who cares? You tried. And now I'm going to go out and I'm, or the trainer or the, um, your, your senior manager is going to go out and help you uh, with resolving the problem. But at least you came back to us with uh, resolution or what you tried to do. So that's yep. this, that's a quick one for us. I love it. I love that, Norm. I've already uh, taken down some notes. I know. Oh, very good. We'll be doing too. <laughs> And Kelsey is rolling. I can see him in the background rolling his eyes. But uh, anyway, let's see. We are getting, oh, wow. It's already one o'clock. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. If this is your last time, by the way, to bring in any questions, if you are interested in our giveaway, which is valued at $10,000 today, Josh has been awesome. Uh, uh, man, I uh, I didn't expect that from him today, but it is valued at $10,000. If you're interested in this, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you'll get in. This is your last time before we get into the entry, and we're going right into the Wheel of Kelsey. So, uh, Kels, any questions? I think we have a all few. All right. Uh, just before we do that, I do want to just shout out. We got some Horatio saying, thanks for the podcast, guys um let me see marina saying it's an awesome episode so glad you guys are enjoying it let us know what you think in the comments and uh yeah let's jump to the questions uh and then we'll do the wheel so uh first one is from luke uh have you found anywhere that an assistant will work on a performance base instead of a set of hourly rate is there a difference that you've been finding in the work um where one is better than the other uh, if you could just share your thoughts on that yeah, working on a performance basis, I, that generally happens when you're working with more sales that are, you know, on more on the commission side of things. Um, I, at the end of the day, you shouldn't need to worry about like, how do I structure like, in my opinion, just off the top of my head, that seems like that would be a very complicated setup to be like, performance based for like mm. an assistant. Um, what I would do that's, it goes straight back to the KPIs, right? If you set the KPIs, they are either hitting those KPIs, right? Those key performance indicators, or they are not, which is basically the performance that you're looking for, right? And for me with my team, you know, I'll even hire uh, with our customer service manager, I will hire them on like a retainer basis, which means I'm paying them a monthly salary and I'm not tracking their hours, right? I don't care if it takes them 20 hours a day to reply to my messages, now it doesn't, or it's eight hours, or it's even four hours, right? If they're more efficient, I don't care. That saves them time, right? So for me, it's those KPIs, and that's why as a business owner, you gotta get really, really good at documenting what are those performance indicators so that it kind of, meet your question there, Luke, of like, you, you're you looking for them to perform well. Well, go ahead and set those KPIs, make sure you communicate to them, and then make sure you're tracking them on a regular basis. Yeah, and if it's strictly cost, and you know, you're worried about that, Luke, you might be just expanding. Don't forget, a lot of people can hire uh, part-timers and grow yeah. into the position. Uh, my take on it is if you're getting somebody, and let's say it's a a, a VA that is fairly uh, low cost, let's say, you know, five, six bucks an hour, and they're excellent, and you give them a bit of time, maybe a probation period, uh, and it's 20 hours, I would try to lock them in to full-time work, because if they're that good, and they're that hard to find, um, 
that's when I would lock it in. So test, you can test it out uh, uh, part-time, but believe me, a good uh, VA or, or a good contractor is going to be in demand. And another uh, thing that I, I want to say, slightly different rabbit hole, but on the pay structure, um, one of the things I really try to do is make sure that the, uh, the employee contractor is paid well. Uh, one of the reasons for this, let's say it's the Philippines, is they want to have some security. They don't want to think that, you know, they might not have a job tomorrow or, you know, something like that. But loyalty, security, job, if you can pay a little bit more, you'll have that person just, you know, dying to work for you. Um, and another big, really, really big point, and I, I don't think I need to, to tell our, our community this, don't scream, don't yell, don't scream at people at on virtual calls, don't look down or make people feel bad because uh, they're going to leave. You might think you got one over on them because they made a mistake and, you know, you're screaming and yelling. doesn't work. It does not work. You know, all they're going to be doing is being afraid to give you suggestions. The other thing to this is make sure you do take screenshots of their um, internet, their computer, uh, their phone, and you want to know what type of phone. You want to know, uh, you know, is the computer old? Uh, like right now, uh, with a couple of our, I, I'm not going to mention any names, but a couple of the VAs that usually tune in here, they had problems with their computers. All right. So this happened today, by the way. I just talked to Afalabi, but uh, somebody had a computer. Their computer died. Okay, let's buy them a new one. And if they're on for a year, it's automatic. We don't even think twice. If it's something that maybe they're three months into it, all right, let's work out a deal. You go out and find the computer that you need. Send us over the information. You want to put it onto a lease? You know, put it on a lease for a year, and we'll make your lease payments for you. If you decide to leave before the year, you continue the lease payments. Um, but again, if the person's over a year, we take care of it. In some cases, we bought generators because we know that in the Philippines that they get tropical storms. Well, you're down five times a year, six times a year, 10 times a year. Let's get you a generator. So these are certain things that we've done as well. And I know I'm way over time right now. But anyways, those are a few other things that we do. Okay, uh, next question is from Jeff, or I guess more of a comment, but he was saying, uh, I'm surprised that potential VAs would give up so much uh, particular references or their info. Um, do you ever get any hesitation from VAs offering um, their information that you're asking from? Yeah, I, I genuinely don't, um, because I think like everybody likes to do reference checks. And to me, that would be a big red flag if they're yeah. like, no, I don't want to disclose the don't talk to my employer. my manager <laughs> yeah if you if they're saying no i don't want please don't read it's one thing if like they're in a current job and it's like oh i don't want them to know i'm looking for a job i'll respect that but previous people that you worked there a couple years ago and they're like no i don't want to tell you my manager's name i've actually never gotten that but if i did i'd be like okay well obviously you have something to hide so you're off because yeah. Yeah, I haven't had that happen. No, I, I don't either. Usually uh, it's encouraged, you know, the, you'll see it on their resume. Here are my references. Yeah. Okay, great. And a comment from Luke that just came in. Uh, thank you both for the insight. I do appreciate learning and getting perspective. Uh, you are correct, Norm. Cost is a definite factor, and I couldn't agree more about not yelling. It solves nothing. Uh, treating yep. an employee well and uh, paying well is a must. Yeah, and it provides security. All right. And this is a little off topic. Uh, it's from Jerry. Um, if you have a family member who just graduated in supply chain management, uh, where can they find work with e-commerce people such as yourself, Norm, or your guest? Is there any advice, tips you can give to that? I think they're in a good, uh, as a good profession right now. Uh, they could pro well, first of all, I would definitely look on the job boards or job apps, you know, Indeed or, you know, some of the other ones that are out there. But uh, 
there are so many 3PLs right now um, that could probably use your help. Um, and, it, you know, if there's somebody in particular you're looking for, uh, I could probably provide a few names if you do need that. Uh, that are probably because it, it's such a booming, expanding uh, uh, position, you know, if you've got that knowledge. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, I think you could even join a few of like the Amazon specific Facebook groups and just say, hey, you know, that that person could go in and comment, just say, I just recently graduated with my degree in supply chain management, would love to work for some of you guys, whether it be on a consultative basis or part time and pick up clients, because I know like good grief, you go into some of those Facebook groups, as you know, Norm, like everybody's like, how do I find a good VA or yep. I, I'm looking for this person. And so if somebody joins that group and then is like, hey, I'm offering my services, man, I think they'd be gobbled up pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then from Chuck, our last question, uh, at what level of your business would you suggest hiring your first VA? Do you suggest hiring one uh, for menial tasks just to get your feet wet with hiring? Yeah. So I'll, I'll take the first stab and interested to hear your approach as well, Norm. Um, for me, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a very methodical approach into how we're hiring. One of the best things, and we didn't have enough time to really dive into this, but for me to identify what my biggest bottleneck is in the business. Okay. So when it was just first my wife and I, we first had to go through and do a time study. Okay. When you do a time study, you're actually documenting what you do every 15 minutes of the day. Does that sound tedious? Yeah, it sure does. But if you do that and you are actually writing down, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm working on, and you will you know, do that for two weeks, you step away from those two weeks, you're going to quickly identify, holy crap, I spend a lot of time on supply chain management, or I spend a lot of time just sifting through my hundreds of emails that I get every day. And you all of a sudden can identify chunks of time that it's like, oh, you know what? I can create a process around this. And then I could give this to somebody else. And wow, I've just opened up an extra hour of my day every single day, right? And so it's really identifying those bottlenecks, those pain points in your own. If it's just you starting the business, identifying what's taking you the most time and then giving that off to somebody else. Um, and not just hiring somebody just to say, I don't know what you can do. Just go figure something out. Like it, it should be bringing value to you as the business owner, freeing you up to do higher paying, higher level tasks than the $5 an hour work, so to speak. Yeah. So what you're talking about uh, is, I'd expand on that just a little bit. So the time study is really important. You name the task. So there's all these different tasks that you're doing. And one of the things we were just doing this, by the way, one of the things we create is a task board and we have 10, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. And these are not dollar values. It's just, you know, different, different boards. And so the $10 ones are the ones that you can train your VA to do very easily. The next one, the hundred dollars, probably a little bit more sophisticated, maybe PPC, the next one, it would be a little bit higher. And the, and the last one is something you want to be working on to grow the business. Could be going out to events. It could be networking. It could be the vision of the business. But when you all of a sudden see these tasks, these $10 tasks in the row, now you can go three, through and you can see the repeated tasks. Just like you said, Josh, those are the ones you can isolate and get, uh, uh, get the uh, VAs to start working on. But before you do anything, so let's say you're just starting out on Amazon, you just finished out a course, probably the most important thing and the most important tools that you can use are something like Loom or um, an, an app that you could just like uh, their street process. I know Steve Simonson's got SOP box, but just something, uh, Flowster, uh, different, uh, just something to track your SOPs. And the reason why I'm saying this is that you do something once. You're just doing it once. And I guarantee you, you're probably looking over YouTube or the internet trying to figure out how to do the bloody thing. You do it once. You say, oh, I'll never forget this. I can train somebody. A year later, try to figure that out. It's so bloody simple to hit Loom 
Uh, and when you use Loom, by the way, use it properly. Title it so you can search it. Tag it so you can find it easily. If it's an SOP, you know, what's it about? Uh, operation, sales, marketing, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be difficult. But these are super simple things that you can just keep throwing into a folder. And when you do need to come back for it, you've got the resources. So doing the, the SOP, I call it a policy and procedure. But if you're doing that, it takes a bit of time. The Loom videos can just give you a really good refresher on what you have to do. That's my two cents. Okay, so Kels, I guess we should, uh, well, first of all, before we go anywhere, Josh, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, so you can reach out to me at josh at ecombreakthrough.com. I have a podcast. It's called Ecom Breakthrough. It's Ecom with two M's, by the way. Um, so on all the platforms, but you can go check that out. Follow me there and uh, yeah, and, and reach out to me. And always happy to answer questions and solve problems going on in the e-commerce industry. <laughs> All right, so let's get to a commercial and then we'll get to the wheel. All right, here we go. I wanna give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors that help us produce this podcast for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Lunch with Norm would not be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro, Clear Ads, Goldstein Law, Honu Worldwide, Extreme Power, Jeff Schick Law, NetFluence, Startup Club, and Dragonfish Brand Management. Thank you, and you're awesome. Now back to the show. Okay. It's time, oh. Josh. If you've not prepared or if you've never seen this, you might want to turn your volume down a little. All right. Good oh. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here is the Wheel of Kelsey. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All okay. right. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone who entered today's Wheel of Kelsey. Um, really appreciate everyone's uh, joining in on today's call. And uh, yeah, let's see who today's winner is. Um, winner today. Shuffle them up. Yeah, this is for the business audit. I'm just going to double check and make sure no one left any comments. On You'll get nasty Facebook emails. Group. Oh, yeah. They, won't, they won't just be for me this time, Kels. <laughs> Uh, I got Marsha in. All right. I think that's everyone. Okay. So here we go. Shovel them up and give it a spin. If you are the winner, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. And let's see who today's winner is. All right. Jerry. <laughs> was that Jerry Mendoza? It was. Ah, my little brother. All right. Congratulations, Jerry. Make sure you email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and uh, we'll connect you. All right. So, Josh, thank you so much for being on the podcast for the first time. Hopefully, you'll come back and do a few more of these with me. Norm, this was a lot of fun, and I know we, we just barely scratched the surface on many topics that we could have talked about today. So, would love to come back, and it's been a pleasure. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm.